Okay, so um, I wanted to take you through a few slides that explain what I would love to work with your church on um, this spring. Um, and in the way that, that I've designed these cohorts is kind of as primers, that is like things to kind of get you off the ground, start getting some traction, give you an introduction, a whole lot of information, and some beginning practices and a, a starting rhythm. Uh, to do new things, for to actually move in a new direction, and 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 to to help your church um, reach new people, and and have a better relationship with your neighbors and and with your community. Um, so so yeah, let me talk a little bit more about that. I'll share my screen and go through a couple slides here. Um, <clears throat> the first is this really important reminder that you and I, as followers of Jesus, we're all going through a process of transformation. We are being formed and shaped into the image of Jesus Christ. We're being sanctified. We're growing. And um, one of the ways this happens is on mission. So God sends God's people on mission in the world. And mission is not something that we do as like an afterthought of our discipleship or as like the graduate course in our discipleship. Mission is actually where God sends us on to make us disciples. So it's a lot of times we get that. The, the wrong way. We think I've got to be a mature disciple, then God sends me on mission. No, I meet Jesus, God sends me. And on that mission that God sends me on, I grow in my discipleship. This is actually literally what Jesus did with his disciples from day one. He said, follow me, um, I'll make you fish for people, right? Like this is, this is 101 discipleship. So what we're doing in the neighborhood and the communities around our churches is kind of this threefold process of transformation. The number one thing that all of my lessons and teachings will, will emphasize is that we are called to discover, let's say right here, what God is already doing. So God is already present, already moving beyond the walls of our churches. Um, God is with people in organizations, in institutions, associations, people we expect, people we don't expect. But step one is always listening, watching, observing, asking learning what is God currently doing uh, around us and in our uh, outside of our church, right? And so th this is so important because if we don't realize God is active outside the church, then we think we have to do all the God stuff. We have to bring all the blessing, all the provision, all of the information, um, all of the salvation. And good, good news, that's not all on us. We're sent into a world where it says God's glory fills the earth, right? God is in the world. We believe in prevenient grace. That is a grace that goes before. And so it goes before us into the world. So number one is discover. But then there's a big work of discernment, number two. So discernment is when we are beginning to discover that God is in fact in our neighborhood, in our community, and that God is working with people. But what is our place? So that's not given. So we often think there's this very clear program that, you know, I invite people to church, they come to worship, that was my job as the church, right? Or I think uh, my, my invitation clearly is to get people into the programs and ministries of my church. That's, that's what we're supposed to do. Grow the church, get people to come to worship, listen to my preacher, right? Or listen, <laughs> do the kids thing. Friends, that's a maybe. Maybe God's inviting you to do that. And I would say certainly at some point with some people, God is absolutely inviting us to do that. Many times, God is inviting us to do something else. And that means it may be more, not what we expect. Are we willing to be transformed and discern? So discernment means that we talk to our neighbors. It means we listen to them. It means we pray. It means that over time we, we discover what our place is. What is our role? In, um, in our activity and in, in what attitude are we to have in that situation? Just an example, you know, we may be end up being called to support our teachers at a local school in a particular way, or to come alongside another nonprofit organization that's doing amazing work and to really become a champion in that work. Um, we may be called to, to join an association of ladies in a neighborhood um, and to give them what they need to do what God is already doing in or through them. We may be called to do all kinds of things 
besides invite people to church and get them to be a part of our programs and ministries. Does that make sense? Discernment. It's part of our transformation. And then finally, participation. So that's the doing, right? When we actually, and I can't tell you what joy and goodness here, excuse me, my sun is shining. I don't think you're looking at me, but um, the, the excitement about being a part of what God is doing and what our neighbor is doing is transformative. The joy of saying, I'm on an adventure with God. I'm being changed and shaped by this experience. So walking with God, uh, it always changes us, right? So this is a process of transformation that you are invited to um, as you restart. So it's not doing what you've always done. It's going out into your neighborhood with your neighbors um, and doing, doing some things in new ways. All right. So I'm offering three different primers. They're all six weeks long. They're all on Zoom. They all are focusing you on being engaged beyond the walls of your church. They're all focused on you learning through experience. So not just books, but through experience. They're all focused on um, having small groups. So we could have five to 30 people on this Zoom call from different churches, but I will be breaking you up so you can reflect and pray together and learn from each other. Um, so your church teams are welcome to any three of these trainings that I want to offer this spring to you. And what we'll do each time we meet, we'll meet for about an hour on Zoom six times, is I'll give you some concepts to think about. We'll talk about them. We'll talk about the exercises and many experiences, experiments you're doing, and then you'll make an action plan for the upcoming week. And so these primers are focused on your activity during the week between meetings. Does this make sense? You'll have homework. And you will be placed in relationship with your neighbors each week. Um, and we'll talk about how that looks different for each of these. Quick reminder of how this works. Like, if you're going to be successful, my experience in this new wineskin work with any church is you've got to be curious. You've got to be, like, hungry to learn. And so if you're coming into this with all the answers, or if you're still in a place in grief where you're just hunkered down, um, and closed off, first of all, that's okay, but just recognize that, right, about yourself and give yourself time to heal, but be ready to be curious and be ready to be surprised at what God is doing and what God calls you to do. And if you're hungry for that and want that, you have a much higher rate of success than if you come in with all your assumptions um, and all your baggage. You know, we all do. This is just basic how we learn, right, no matter how old you are or young you are. Another reminder is this is a long-term commitment. And I don't mean like with me or with one of these primers, six weeks long. Um, there are a lot of other things you can do with me uh, going forward, but transformation is a long-term commitment. <laughs> and, and moving beyond the walls and having a major shift in the way we live as church to build new wineskins, that takes, it takes time. It takes a long time. And so please don't come into this thinking you have kind of a quick and easy silver bullet or that it's going to completely line up with everything you've always done. It probably won't. And it's going to mean you, there's going to have to be a long time of change. And then uh, the other thing is I have found that the sooner a community of faith invites people who are not a part of that community of faith to be a part of the learning and the discussion, um, the better. So if we wait to be all put together and nice and tidy, tied up with a bow uh, before we engage our neighbors, number one, that's going to take forever and never happened. But number two, we just left our neighbors out of the most attractive and relational part, which is our own transformation, right? Let your neighbors in to see God transforming you and let your neighbors in so you can see God transforming them. And so the sooner you can have neighbors be a part of anything you're doing um, in your life, in your family, in your uh, church, do it sooner than later. Don't wait. Okay. Here they are real quick. Three different cohorts, all, si all six weeks long. The first one is called the Intro to Neighboring. It's what it sounds like. It's, it's how we begin your neighboring adventure at your church. I'll give you a toolkit of things that you can use church-wide, best practices for neighboring. You'll develop a church-wide calendar 
um, that gives you a neighboring emphasis. You may have already done this in your church. A lot of churches have. It's okay to do it a second, third, fourth time because there are a lot of people in your church who've taken it seriously. And some of them may be tired of it, but we'll try to make it as fresh as we can so that you can have a neighborhood neighboring emphasis at your church. And you will, even at the end of the six weeks, host a neighborhood event or gathering, which gets people together from your neighborhood into your church or around your church or near your home. Um, so that's what the intro to neighboring does. It gives you those tools. It sets you up to begin that adventure. And then there's the missional discernment uh, primer or cohort. This one steps back a little and doesn't just focus on neighboring, but asks the question, what is God doing in my community? How am I being invited to participate? I have found working with over 30 churches over the last couple of years that we haven't done this. Most churches don't know the answer to that question. So most churches don't know what God is doing outside of their church and how they're being invited to participate in it. And so there, there's really not a lot you can do if you don't know those, those answers. So we're going to explore what the tools for discernment are. We're going to develop, develop a, a, a timeline for you at your church for discernment that's realistic and that has steps you can follow. And then we're going to go ahead in that six weeks, give you um, a piece of what you know God is doing. So we'll find something in six weeks that God is doing in your community or neighborhood uh, that you are being invited to participate with that can start to give you a spur in the right direction. Hope that makes sense. And then finally, I'll do an intro to ABCD. So I haven't mentioned this, but asset-based community development, that's what ABCD uh, stands for, is to me one of the most important lenses that the church needs to start looking through if we're going to not just survive, but thrive in the future and really be leaders in our community. We have to start seeing the gifts and assets and skills um, and treasures that God has provided the church and our communities in the community, okay? And this primer focuses on getting you started uh, with that lens. So I'm gonna offer you concepts, the outcomes and practices of asset-based community development. One of the key ones is called mapping. And that's where you actually get to know neighbors, institutions, spaces, organizations around you. And you start to map out just how abundantly God has provided gifts in your community. And then we're going to go ahead and create a map that is very initial, very short term, but gives you a beginning that you can then share with your church. And here's the key. You can also share with your neighbors. So imagine being able to go to people in your church and go to the people around your church and say, hey, as a church, we just wanted to look at all the good things God was doing in our community and put it in one place and talk about how they might be connected. And then we wanted to share that with our neighbors and with our church so that we had a better idea of how good God is and how we might be a part of what God's doing. Isn't that cool? That'd be a, such a cool idea. And we want to have that for you by the end of that six weeks. So these are three different primers. Um, you could do all three. You could do one. Uh, any of these that you do, I did want to mention something about what happens next afterward. So a lot of these have tons of resources you can follow up with. That are, that are free out there in the world um, that I want you to know about. I'll, I'll give you some of that. Uh, but then I have a lot of longer term training organization or training opportunities. So um, semester long, kind of three month. Um, we have an ongoing midweek Zoom group of people who are all just doing this work day in and day out. Practitioners. We get together. We learn together. Um, we teach each other. And so you could be a part of that. Uh, I do coaching. So I'd love to do one-on-one -on -one coaching with your church or with a team uh, as you continue to go through this transformation. There's another cohort called the Good Neighbor Experiment that I highly recommend that I'm a facilitator for. Um, that can be a church-wide way of getting to know your neighbors. Uses a lot of the stuff I've talked about. Uh, we have within our own conference, the Transforming Communities Network. Hopefully you're hearing today from Abel, or Bob, or both of them about TCN. 
um, and ways you can benefit from them. And then my final word is I just want you uh, as, as a churches and as people who have gone through so much loss, I want you to begin to enjoy the abundance uh, and experience the discovery and adventure that God is offering you as a church out of the ashes, right? Out of this time of change and loss. So actually, let me share one more thing um, as we go on my information. I want you to reach out to Karen or to me um, so that we can be doing these adventures together. Uh, I, again, would love nothing more than to work with you in your church. This is part of my calling. It's part of my passion. I keep one foot learning about it in my own neighborhood and training others in my community and another foot in the church, trying to offer what we're discovering and learning to church folks, because I'm a church kid um, and I love the church. So uh, one more thing. Here we go. My information. Here's me. That's my phone number. That's my email address. Please reach out to me and let's work together. Much love. You all are in my prayers and in my thoughts. And again, please be encouraged that not only can it happen, not only is this not your fault, but this is an opportunity like I've never seen in my life for us to be a part of New Wine Skins together and see what God is doing with New Wine. Much love to you all. God bless you. Hopefully I'll see you all soon.